Chapter 21, Kiana Rubini. No bikini aura. That has nothing to do with bathing suits. It's an anagram of my name. Mr. Kermit has me working with Parker on anagrams to improve his reading. Parker's getting pretty good, but for one, or but for me, it's just fun. It's amazing the stuff you can come up with. For example, Zachary Kermit can be scrambled into crazy tram hike, or Aldo Braff into fold a barf. Even Aldo laughs at that one. And he doesn't strike me as someone with a great sense of humor, especially about himself. He looks pretty different when he smiles, like his face is going all going along with all that red hair instead of fighting against it. Or maybe Aldo decides to be mellow because he doesn't have a lot of choice. His reading partner is Elaine. It's one thing to kick a locker. A locker can't headbutt you down a flight of stairs or any other of Elaine's greatest hits. Like chucking a fire extinguisher at your face, or giving you new ear piercing with a fish hook. To everybody's surprise, Elaine turns out to be kind of a serious student, which nobody noticed before, since they were too busy being terrified of her. Mr. Kermit assigns them where the red fern grows, and Elaine is totally into it, so Aldo has to read it too, even though he claims the last book he finished was Hop on Pop. The other reading group is Barnstorm, Mateo, and Rahim. This works because Mateo never shuts up, which keeps Rahim from falling asleep. Actually, Rahim is more awake lately anyway. Mr. Kermit talked to his stepdad, who agreed to move his rock band's nighttime rehearsals into an alternate venue. Guess where? An empty storage garage at Terra Nova Motors. Sometimes I join these guys because Parker goes to a reading specialist three days a week. That makes four of us, but it's usually just three because Rahim isn't around as much these days. Mr. Kermit got him accepted as a part-time art student at the community college on the other side of the river. Since he draws all the time, it makes sense to send him somewhere that's a good thing. It's complicated, but it works. On any given day, Barnstorm might have three partners or two or just one. It doesn't make that much difference because the only thing he really cares about is puffy tails. Like any athlete, Barnstorm's competitive, but since he's sidelined from sports, all that competitive energy gets channeled into good bunnies. His parade of puffy tails stretches past the basket of carrots, off the poster and two-thirds of the way across the wall. He's miles ahead of me in second place. Mostly, that's because he won't cash them in. He's too greedy. Whenever my line of puffy tails reaches the carrots, I redeem them for a reward. Our class has already had two pizza parties, thanks to me. Plus, I lent Aldo a bunch so he could pay off penalties for some late homework assignments. That was Mr. Kermit's idea. He's using puffy tails to teach us how an economy works. We're free to trade them, spend them, sell them, or lend them, but the lenders have to charge interest. Aldo owes me 10% each week, and he's sinking deeper and deeper into debt. You're a sucker, Brainstorm tells me. He's never going to pay you back. It's puffy tails down a sinkhole. He is so, I defend Aldo, and with interest. Using what, Brainstorm retorts. He's never earned a single puffy tail. Aldo leaps, leaps up. I have two. I just spend mine on fines and stuff. Sit. Elaine rumbles, and Eldo plunks back down onto his chair. Barnstorm won't let it go. Name one thing you ever did for a puffy tail. Eldo thinks hard. I, I changed the bulb in the projector. No, that was Rahim, Mateo puts in. In frustration, Eldo runs his hand through his red hair, which makes it even messier. Big deal. Who cares about a bunch of rabbit butts? I glare at Barnstorm. I have faith in Eldo. Oh yeah? He shoots back. Why? It's a good question. Why would I ever put my trust in a bad-tempered redhead and a straight D student? Well, part of it is probably because I don't care that much about puffy tails to begin with, but I think the other part might be Vladimir. Eight classes a day make their way through room 115, and that lizard doesn't squeak his head off for any of them. He loves Aldo. Only Aldo. 
And aren't animals supposed to have instincts about people who are good at heart? I turn on Barnstorm. At least Eldo's not a tight-fisted cheapskate like you. When the year's over and we're in high school, all those puffy tails will be worthless. You can't take it with you, Elaine adds philosophically. Barnstorm is smug. At least I'll be rich. You're a Ferengi, Matteo tells him. That's a race of aliens from Star Trek. They worship money and profit above all things. Settle down, Mr. Kermit says mildly. We're free to spend or not spend our puffy tails however we choose. That's how an open economy works, or a market economy works. As we settle back to work, I can't help thinking about what I said to Barnstorm. When the year's over and we're in high school, I'm not going to be in high school with these kids. I'll be gone before the end of the summer. How many times can Mom's movie get struck by lightning? But at the moment, the words were coming out of my mouth. I meant them. I actually saw myself finishing out the year of this class I don't belong in, in this school I don't really go to, and in this town where my only connection is the fact that my parents grew up here. Oh man, I've got to get back to L.A. and fast. That's the end of chapter 21.